Hey friends, and welcome back to Vervain's Arcadia. You all may have seen my uh, community post recently that this video was delayed because of some technical difficulties with my computer dying, basically. Um, but I hope that this will work out at least well enough for me to show you what I worked on in that episode because it was so much fun. Our first project was a raid farm, and not just any raid farm, but Nash's stacking raid farm, which is pretty hefty as far as raid farms go. I have been thinking about Christmas a lot, which is not unusual because I am a musician and I also hand make a lot of my Christmas gifts, and so it's definitely time to be working on all of those things. But I decided to make, ah! <laughs> well, there it is. I decided to make it in ugly Christmas sweater colors, and it's amazing. I love it. Now, this thing is huge, and it took a while to build, though the main part really only took a day, which, you know, it was like an eight-hour day, but you know. Not as bad as I was expecting, to be honest. My absolute favorite part of this farm was the genius way that we deposited the villagers into each of their modules. Badoop. Yes, and then we go, shoop, goodbye, sir. Now, I knew that this farm was going to uh, be a lot. It was going to produce a lot of things very quickly. So I put together, well, I learned from YouTube, somebody on YouTube, I'll link to the video, but I can't remember their name, um, their minecart based storage system, which picks up things a lot faster. I had to also make a minecart and double dropper delivery system for this, but um, I only ended up breaking one of the item filters and that was the emerald one, which makes sense because there were just so many pouring in there. Now, I know I don't have more emeralds than I'll ever need, but I already have a shulker box almost of emerald blocks plus that, and I've been making beacons out of emeralds, which is amazing. I love it. I also have more totems than I'm ever going to need. I've barely even touched the box that Hobo dropped off for me anyways. <laughs> Working on this farm was super cool because I'm at the point where I could understand a lot of the redstone or learn what a lot of the redstone was doing. For example, we send our redstone signals up the bubble column here by using a block switcher to change the direction of the bubble column. We use observers at the villager modules to like pick up those changes and like, I don't think I would have thought of that, but it makes so much sense and it's super, super neat. I still don't fully understand, like, armor stand mechanics and sweeping edge with armor stands and all of that. But that's what we use in the killing chamber. And it also triggers an armor stand to jump through the string, which triggers the observer. <sighs> so many cool things. I don't have an auto clicker, so I made this circuit to time my sword swings. And all in all, it's not too bad to use, even with my terrible computer performance until, you know, the connection gets so bad and the lag gets so bad that suddenly her vex is after you. It's fine, I didn't die, but I did pop my totem and I had to run far, far away as quickly as possible. Difficult when, you know, it's lagging. Now, of course, getting villagers for the raid farm meant that, you know, I needed to find a village nearby because I wasn't about to ship them all the way across the nether roof from the area where I have them now. I did find one close by and uh, just bred up villagers there to bring over, which was a relatively painless process. Not something you can often say while working with villagers. I do plan to, I think, build a villager breeder here, probably do that off camera while my video continues being a problem. But we had an extra exciting thing happen while we were there and I will show you that now. This episode is becoming more Christmas-like by the second. It's like Christmas morning for me. And just down here is the reason why. Remember early on on this server how I went looking for all the different cats for the achievement for having all of them? And the last one was a ginger cat. And I looked for him all day. And then promptly killed him. <gasps> I was sitting here waiting for villagers to uh, make more of them. 
I was like half AFK, you know, sleeping through the night and sometimes checking in on the villagers. Um, and I caught a glimpse of a little orange thing. And it's this lovely fella. And of course we have a special name for him, Pickle the Second, his most majestic surness. And once we had gotten all of the villagers, we went ahead and shipped them across the nether roof, which is a very short distance, popped them through this portal here, straight into a boat, and sailed them off to the raid farm tower where they were dropped from the top into their little homes that are now their forever homes. Now, there's still more wonderful, exciting, happy things that happened, but I will let past D tell you about that this time. Christmas has not ended, my friends, though, because there is more. Our fearless leader of the server, 90, checked into uh, the thing that I was excited about last episode that didn't come through, armor stand animations. So with the armor statues plugin, um, a recent update added the ability to power them with redstone and have them change from position to position. So of course, the very first thing we're gonna do with that is add some figure skaters. So with the newly updated Statues 2.10 book, we can choose a position, copy it into the book, set this to a different position, pop the book here, and then power it with redstone in order to change it. The other thing is that um, it's an eight block radius, uh, and it will only power the nearest armor stand within that eight blocks. So our first figure skater is gonna be false, set up here in the middle of the ice rink. She of course needs some appropriate clothes, so let's see. I like that color. Aw, we have a cute little skating false now. I'm a little sad that you can't actually change the position of the armor stand. And therefore, you know, have it move a little bit. But this is pretty cool anyways. If you pop down underneath her, we have just a simple little timer circuit going through underneath the books. And then we can go ahead and seal this right up. And well, we've got more to do. Now over here, I want to do a little Wells night. Now, Wells seems to have something a little a little concerning going on here. So we're gonna assume that maybe he's a little bit clumsy on the ice. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of a tripping and falling with this guy. Now I've made a pointer wand and an adjustment stick and the pointer wand is my best friend. What's gonna happen is he's gonna be skating along using basically the generic running position. So let's go ahead and copy that into a book here. And then, as he brings his, what leg is this, right leg, forward, and let's bring it up even more. But doop there we go. He's going to catch his toe a little bit on the ice here. But it's going to be just a little bit behind him. And we can bring that guy down a little bit, I think. There we go, that's what we want. And then... This arm, of course, will come way up. ba -doop. And with the adjustment wand, we just pop it down just a little bit. And then this arm, let's see, is going to come a little bit more straight towards us. Yeah. There we go. That's a terrified falling skater if I've ever seen one. So then we'll copy this. So that is our second one. And then he will catch himself. And we should maybe, you know, change, change, change his head position a little bit too. Okay, now that our mishap prone friend here has been all programmed up. Let's head right on down and get the automation set up. 
and we go boop and boop and boop and boop and suddenly it's alive <laughs> oh this is delightful what we've learned from false here is that it's best i think to have the circuits in eight ticks Otherwise, it will kind of end up randomizing which which pose it switches to. So if you want a sequential order, eight ticks or a multiple thereof in between, and you should be good, I think. I don't know. That's my observations with this one anyway. What is has visual fire? Oh, goodness. Okay, that's cool, but obviously, uh, I'd rather not be on fire while ice skating. Or any time, really. Oh my goodness, I'm so in love with this. Look at it. Oh. Pickles the second, his most majestic Cernus, also seems to like them. I love how this little skater, the old me, if you will, uh, turned out. She's so cute. And I think I think the spinning animation worked out pretty well. It was definitely the most complex one as far as figures to put together. But as far as the actual redstone, I had already figured things out with these guys. I was going to work on my wither skeleton farm a little bit more today. But honestly, I've been doing a lot of grindy stuff and technical stuff. And I'm just really tired. And I wanted to work on something a little bit more chill. And I saw this tree here. Uh, the oak tree that was here, and I was like, oh, we should make it like our enchanting tree over there. So, yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. Kind of during the last episode, I worked on this build here, but I never really showcased it. Um, it doesn't have a ton inside. Oh my gosh. Listen to that sound. Oof. Yeah, so we've got bits of bamboo stuff. I don't know if that's my favorite sound in the world. I definitely wouldn't want to walk all over all day, that's for sure. But then out back is like, you know, the actual dock. That's not the correct word. I don't know. Platform, platform. There we go. That's the word. Um, and this is based on another actual, like, historical Alaska build. This one is based on the train station in Nanana, which is a little village on the road system. One of the few that is. And it also happens to have the pipeline and the Alaska Railroad running through it. So, this is one of the oldest buildings there at this point, I think. Um, yeah, it's not a one-for-one -one build. Not nearly as much as the library was, but it's still pretty cute and gets the idea across, I think. This was just a delightful episode to work on. Thank you for coming along, even if the ride was maybe a little more bumpy than anticipated. I'm super happy with all of the things that we accomplished. Like, there was so much that got accomplished, but it was also just all super, super fun. None of it really felt grindy. There were so many new things and learning things and exciting things. I loved it. Now, if you enjoyed the video and haven't already, Pickle the Second, his most majestic Cernus, would love it if you liked the video and considered subscribing to the channel. Okay, okay, I would like it too, I would like it too. I think in the next episode we'll start working on this space, which is also going to include linking up several different portions of our base that we've worked on so far, so I'm super excited for that. You can also see in my inventory, I've been doing some preparatory things for uh, future projects. Big things. Exciting things. In the little bit of time that I've had to, like, take away from making videos while I figured this out, I got to do a tour of the server for the third birthday of Vervain's Arcadia, and I've been hanging out in creative, and I have so many ideas and so many things that I'm so excited to work on in the future. So definitely stick around for that, and as we take it one episode at a time, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!